welcome back again friends and um i wanted to address this question that i get asked a lot because well i read your comments under my videos and in the past and elsewhere more recently under my videos it was posed this question that could the one of turkey be the antichrist <clears throat> Before I go into some of the things I want to share with you as quickly as I can, because this is a short update, let's consider a few facts. Well, number one, Turkey is head chief ruler. This region in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, the infamous Gog and Magog alliance that comes against Israel in the last days, the chief ruler, Magog, Meshach and Thubal, the coalition, which includes the region of Persia, Libya, Sudan, and so forth. Turkey is also the seat of Satan, according to the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, which are found in the book of Revelation, chapter 2. This is the region of the former capital of the Ottoman Empire, which he apparently wants to revive, especially considering his language regarding 2023 which is next year. This region is strategically located east to west. He does have messianic complex <laughs> issues, I think we can safely say. He's also intimidating his neighbouring countries such as Greece, Cyprus, Armenia, Israel, in the past at least. He's blatantly invading Syria. He's made incursions in Iraq. He's um, cracking down on the Kurdish people. He has supported ISIS in the past. I did a video about that. He's got um, a history of anti-Israeli sentiments. Currently, he's causing problems for NATO, who are really pushing for Finland and Sweden for membership, and he's causing a problem for that. He's also had a history of Islamist jihadist views. His famous speech more recently, I believe it's 2019 at the United Nations General Assembly, he talked about and he phrased it this way, the world is bigger than five, meaning Turkey has a big role to play. Not only Russia, the US, China, UK and France are the key players. No, Turkey is a key player. And he wants to be recognized as so. Another thing, remember the fiasco regarding the Hagia Sophia, the cathedral in Turkey, which he converted back into a mosque because it had a series of, um, what do you call it, controversial status issues. That was a symbol of Christian Byzantine heritage and he converted it to a mosque. He's also prevented Russia from flying it over Syria, which shows us that Russia will be leaving Syria, which again leaves the region over to Turkey and Iran. Together with Azerbaijan, Turkey is forming a resistance against the West, friends, especially this involvement in Armenia. Azerbaijan has made it clear that Russian aircraft would not be allowed to come anywhere near that region so it's a concern it is a concern turkey seems to be a regional player in fact a regional leader <clears throat> but is he the antichrist we're not going to know are we until specific things happen i want to read this news quickly and move along turkey's new syria operation a message to nato just out Erdogan signalled the launch of a new counter-terrorism operation. This is from a Daily Sabah news outlet, which is pro-Turkey. New counter-terrorism operation on northern Syria on May 23rd to resume efforts, continuing on where they left off, to create this safe zone along its border, this southern border. The main target of these operations will be areas that are centres of attacks, on our country and safe zones. The safe zone project is not a new initiative. However, though some parts were established, including ensuring relative stability in the region and enabling civilian returns, it has not been completed. So he's just simply resuming 
his operations there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Erdogan's announcement comes at a time when Turkey has been at the centre of several regional international debates. From Ankara's efforts to normalise ties with several regional countries, including the UAE, Israel, Armenia, Saudi Arabia and Egypt, to mediation efforts between Ukraine and Russia. So is he the Antichrist? Some people might ask. We know that because of his, well, let's say the region itself, the Middle East, this thawing of relations, I believe is due to his economic problems in Turkey, his isolation and his coming out of that isolation, concerns over natural gas, Turkey is having to mend ties with Egypt, the Arabs in the south and Israel. And I believe that is the reason also behind Erdogan's effort to reduce these Muslim Brotherhood activities in Turkey also. It's almost like the Abraham Accords has begun to change the climate in the region, almost forcing Turkey to act more in compliance in this season of working together to set aside our differences. But I believe, friends, this Israeli-Palestinian issue will reignite the ugly side of Turkey. So we'll have to keep watching. Anyway, that's my side commentary. Other one's announcement comes at a time when Turkey has been at the centre of several regional international debates. Right. As the second largest army of NATO, Turkey has, rightly so, voiced its concerns over the two-state membership, saying that both countries support terrorist groups that target its very own sovereignty, Sweden and Finland. Firstly, Ankara is not against NATO's eastward enlargement. It does want to make the same mistake. It does not. I'm, I'm presuming that's what they meant there. It does want to make the same mistake. It does not want to make the same mistake it did by saying an unconditional OK to Greece's acceptance to NATO in 1980 during the late General Keenan Evans team. I'm going to put these links in the description if you are interested in reading further. At a deeper level, however, Turkey's opposition on the membership bid signals a new debate. A new language of Turkish diplomacy is emerging and being conveyed to Turkey's Western allies. If we were to go back and take a look at a series of recent events, the new approach and diplomatic tone to relations with the West can become clearer. And of course, they're going to go into this detail. It's a very interesting article, a very interesting read. But because I want to give you just the headlines... Let's move on to the next article. Considering all those points that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we have to be careful, right, before we claim somebody is the Antichrist, when there's specific events that haven't happened yet, right? But we're being wise, we're being watchful, we're being vigilant, and we're being prayerful, right? Who is the new militant group targeting a Turkish base with drones? I believe this new militant group, friends, that the Jerusalem Post and other news outlets are covering are Iranian. The creation of a new group called Ah Ahasad Aharar Sinjar may be an excuse to strike Turkey now, alleging to be responding to other Turkish attacks. A group calling itself Aharar Sinjar has claimed to carry out a drone attack on a Turkish base in northern Iraq, I believe we're seeing the beginning of a clash between Turkey and Iran. Because now Russia is leaving the region, there's still unresolved business in that region, friends. Remember what the scriptures tell us about the regions of where the Antichrist, the dragon, the false prophets, evil power, demonic power is unleashed. It's from the river Euphrates region. So we are looking at these regions, Turkey, Iraq, Syria, if we were to pinpoint it, that is a hotbed of the beast. So whatever happens from now on is for fight over control over this region, friends. So much to talk about as usual. I'm glad I'm doing these daily updates in a way it makes it easier. 
According to Iranian media, which often reports on events that are linked to Iran and its proxies in the region or somehow benefit Iran, the attack targeted the Turkish base at Bashika, east of Mosul, and involved six kamikaze drones. Other reports said four drones were used and that one struck the base. Turkey is receiving some sort of attack in the midst of its operations, their friends. Ahaval reports, the US says Turkish offensive in Syria would threaten regional stability. The US said it would condemn any escalation of a conflict in northern Syria, warning its ally Turkey against launching a fresh offensive there. Very confusing messages coming out from the US in relation to Turkey, don't you think? On one hand, they're supporting and arming Turkey. On the other hand, they're now calling out condemnation, preventing Turkey from any further fresh offensives in Syria. Any military action by a NATO member Turkey would threaten regional stability and endanger US troops in Syria, US State Department spokesperson Ned Price said at a press briefing in Washington, D.C., which makes me wonder, and I believe other people are also wondering, how long is NATO going to continue with NATO, uh, with Turkey being the second largest member within their own little offensive organisation? I don't believe NATO is a defensive organisation, considering its operations in the past. Let's talk about Syria. Let's talk about Libya. This is an offensive organisation. I believe Turkey is going to leave this coalition once it's gained all the weapons it needs in order to become its own regional hegemon. We recognise Turkey's legitimate security concerns on Turkey's southern border, but any new offensive would further undermine regional stability and put at risk US forces and the coalition's campaign against ISIS. Well, perhaps the US will eventually completely withdraw from the region and completely withdraw and pull out all its troops from Iraq. Let me move on. I'm giving you the headlines. Turkey says normalization of Israel ties will help resolve Palestinian conflict. So you, as I'm sharing these news headlines with you, it would seem that some of the sentiments that people have regarding is Erdogan, the Antichrist, seem valid, don't they, friends? It's understandable when you read such headlines. Istanbul, Turkish Foreign Minister, said on Wednesday that the normalisation of ties between Turkey and Israel will have a positive impact for a peaceful resolution to the Palestinian conflict. In a news conference after talks with his Israeli counterpart, he said the two countries agree to re-energise relations in many areas, including resuming talks on civil aviation. <clears throat> Turkey says Erdogan, Israel's Herzog, to speak after Jerusalem clashes. There's more going on behind the scenes, definitely. Azerbaijan agrees with Armenia. This, please keep an eye on this region here, friends. Pray for the Armenians. Azerbaijani president and his Turkish counterpart stress the importance of achieving peace in the region as soon as possible in a phone call. In order for these Islamic nations, these leaders, to consolidate power of the ten kings, there has to be some sort of agreement on these nations that are considered Christian. Armenia, Greece, Cyprus. Talking about Greece... <clears throat> Mitsotakis vows to defend Greek sovereignty amid Turkish revisionism. You see what's going on, friends? How Turkey is threatening, what does it say here? To destabilize not only the Syrian region, the Iraqi region, <clears throat> but also this Mediterranean region. The Greek Prime Minister has vowed to defend Greece's sovereignty in the face of Turkey's mounting revisionism. During a conversation with Borj, the president of the World Economic Forum in Davos on Wednesday, Mitsotakis said 
that Greece will always seek to keep channels of communication open with its aging neighbour Turkey. On the other hand, if President Erdogan thinks that I will not defend the sovereignty and the sovereign rights of Greece and not make the case to the international audience that Turkey is behaving as a revisionist power, then he is wrong. <clears throat> Strong words. This behaviour is completely unacceptable, the Greek leader said, as he criticised Angara over the continuing overflights of Turkish fighter jets over the Aegean islands. And I will raise that issue whenever I can until Turkey changes its behaviour. Erdogan said on Monday he has no intention of ever meeting with Mitsotakis, again following the latter's criticism of Turkey on his recent visit to the US. He's basically just dismissed the leader of Greece as though he doesn't exist. Erdogan blanks Greek Prime Minister over US remarks. Erdogan says he's cutting all ties with Greek Prime Minister. <clears throat> Excuse me, dashing hopes of talks. This is not good development in the region, friends. I've got this link here to remind myself to leave it in the description box for your later further readings. Very interesting. It gives us a, a really good chronological explanation of the importance of this region, of the Euphrates and the nations that are directly impacted over the situation here. And we'll put this in the link after I'm done recording. Is he... The most likely, let's put it this way, is that the one the most likely candidate right now for the Antichrist, knowing that when the dragon is cast out, realizing he has a short time, is this the man that the dragon will possess? Is he the person he will inhabit and become Gog, chief head ruler of these? largely majority Turkish nations. Shall we go and find out through the scriptures some more details about this? Israel and Turkey opening new chapter in relations just 10 hours ago. There's so much to share. In the book of Revelation, I'm referring you to this portion here. Revelation 12, I knew this is not going to be a short update. <laughs> so much to talk about. Okay. And war broke out in heaven. So this has not happened yet, right? So we can't presume the one is the Antichrist until this event has come to pass. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. I believe Michael is the restrainer. I've done a video on that. A very good, thorough Bible study about Michael. And putting the case forward to show through the scriptures why I believe this angelic being, Michael, is the restrainer of this entity, the dragon. Let's continue. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was the place found for them any in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ have come. For the accused of our brethren, who accused them before our God, day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. So we know that the moment this happens, he goes immediately on attack mode against Israel and all those who believe in the Messiah of Israel, Jesus Christ. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows he has a short time. So we know he immediately goes into persecution mode, attack mode, to make war. He makes war, friends, against, this read 17, and the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Hold that thought, because the region of Turkey, I believe, is very significant. 
In Isaiah chapter 14, I read this before I did a Bible study on it, but I think it's worth going over again. In Isaiah 14, if we read all of this chapter, and you know what to do afterward, please read it fully in its context. Two regions are mentioned in here in connection with this arch enemy of God, Satan, Lucifer, the fallen one. And those two regions are Babylon and Assyria. So the Antichrist has to be a leader of these two ancient kingdoms, primarily Babylon and Assyria. Let's read. It shall come to pass in the day the Lord gives you rest from your sorrow and from your fear and the hard bondage in which you were made to serve, the Lord is talking to Israel, that you will take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, how the oppressor has seized, the golden city seized. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers. He who struck the people in wrath with a continuous stroke, he who ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted and no one hinders. The whole earth is at rest and quiet. They break forth into singing. Indeed, the cypress trees rejoice over you and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since you were cut down, no woodsman has come up against us. Hell from beneath is excited about you to meet you at your coming. It stirs up the dead for you, all the chief ones of the earth. It has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. They all shall speak and say to you, Have you also become as weak as we? Have you become like us? Your pomp is brought down to Sheol, and the sound of your stringed instruments, the maggot is spread under you, and worms cover you. Fall of Lucifer. Now remember that scripture, Revelation chapter 12? Bear that in mind as we read this. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farther sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, all of them sleep in glory, everyone in his own house. But you are cast out of your grave like an abominable branch. My goodness, so much to read. Let me continue to read on until I get to where the scripture mentions also Assyria. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so it shall come to pass, and as I purpose, so it shall stand, that I will break the Assyrian in my land. The Lord here is speaking of the same person, this angelic fallen being who also is a man. He's talking about the same individual. He's a Babylonian. He is an Assyrian, friends. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so it shall come to pass, and as I have purposed, so it shall stand. He is not coming from the Western Europe region, absolutely not. And I will break the Assyrian in my land, and on my mountains tread him underfoot. Then his yoke shall be removed from them, who's them, Israel, and his burden removed from their shoulders. This is a purpose that is purposed against the whole earth. And this is the hand that is stretched out over all the nations. For the Lord of hosts has purposed, and who will annul it? His hand is stretched out, and who will turn it back? Philistia is destroyed. Lebanon is also mentioned in this portion of scripture I read to you earlier, the cedars of Lebanon, but also the regions of where Hamas is in control. Now let's quickly take a look at the Assyrian Empire. Notice the regions highlighted in the yellow. The ancient capital city of Assyria, Nineveh. You know what is um, interesting to me about this region? Look at Babylonian Empire. Notice the regions in yellow. Now, I'm going to propose something to you. I could be wrong. This region 
I think is a region to also keep an eye on. Because this region or this people group have not been given a state. There isn't actually a Kurdistan internationally recognized boundary state, Kurdistan. But I believe this is a very important region, friends. <clears throat> Kurdistan, land of the Kurds, is a roughly defined geo cultural territory in Western Asia wherein the Kurds form a prominent majority population and the Kurdish culture, languages and national identity have historically been based, right? Geographically, Kurdistan roughly encompasses the northwestern Zagros and eastern Taurus mountain ranges. Kurdistan generally comprises the four regions. Check out these regions now. Southeastern Turkey, considered northern Kurdistan. Northern Iraq, southern Kurdistan. Northwestern Iran, eastern Kurdistan. And northern Syria, western Kurdistan. Now, <clears throat> this morning, when I was preparing this message, talking and responding to this question, is Erdogan the Antichrist? Then I went into the scriptures and I was looking at that scripture in Isaiah 14. And there's something about this region, friends. Babylon, Assyrian, ancient empires. And this region encompasses both perfectly. Take a look at that. <clears throat> now, when you remember the scripture I just read to you from Revelation 12, and we know for a fact the angelic beings are warring against other angelic beings god's angels and the dragon's minions are warring and there is a restrainer of the dragon i believe that is michael i believe this is the hotbed of the region of the antichrist i know that's a big statement to make i have i have alluded to it before in the past i don't know if you caught on to that but this region friends is pinpointing the place where I believe this entity is going to declare himself one day as the Mahdi, this region, or however he calls himself. We know the Islamic prophecies talk about Mahdi and Isa, two individuals who are coming, one a messianic figure and the other a prophetic figure, Isa bin Maryam, that's who they call Jesus in the Islamic um, belief system the false prophet in fact that's who he is another image check that out the images that i'm sharing talk about will express illustrate the regions i'm always talking to you about turkey iraq syria and iran strategically in the center what runs through the euphrates river i mean something about this people groups region needs to be paid attention to friends google map all right wow <clears throat> so i don't believe the one is the antichrist no 